Hi, my name is Empty Without Brain. In this video, I will be talking about Aristotle's art of persuasion. Aristotle explains how if we want to be persuasive, we must restructure an individual's point of view from point A to point B. At point A, the person will be resistant to your ideas. In order to be effectively persuasive and communicate successfully, a person must present three types of proof. The first type of proof he referred to as ethos. This type of proof concerns the speaker's character and reputation revealed through communication. For the message to be believable, it must have a source of credibility. Credibility exists in the minds of the listeners, and it's the trust the speaker must possess in the listener's eyes. This refers to the person and transfers sincerity from the individual. The next type of proof is called pathos. This addresses the emotional appeal between the speaker and the receiver. It is essential to appeal to the emotions felt by the listener to become persuasive. In short, the speaker must have empathy. The third type of proof Aristotle called logos. This type of evidence refers to the actual words, facts and use of stories from the speaker. Aristotle explains how this type of evidence is possibly the most significant when it comes to moving the receiver from point A to point B. The speaker must be logical and word his message in a logical order. The words and examples are crucial to the listener's comprehension. Having an understanding of this type of methodology can really help you to persuade a person to your point of view. However, you would also need to be aware of how to construct your argument through analogies. An analogy is a comparison made to draw out similarities between two things. The two main questions that need to be answered for every analogy are which two things are being compared and whether the comparison is valid. An analogy is not valid if the two items that are compared are not sufficiently similar or the comparison is misleading, or the item used for the comparison is described inaccurately. A person can use language to suggest there is no requirement or need to justify a point, which in turn deflects the audience from critically evaluating the reasoning, suggesting the argument is proven. The use of words such as obviously, clearly, and of course, naturally suggests the argument does need any evaluation, which appeals to the modern thinking. Another way of deflecting the audience from the line of reasoning is by referring to the date, as if that itself adds to the weight of the argument. For example, we're not in the 19th century now, it's no longer 1954. As the date is factually accurate, the audience is drawn to the part of the agreement of the argument. This approach attempts to discredit anyone who disagrees with the argument as being old-fashioned and out of date. Complicity is an approach which can be a very effective way of enticing the audience into an agreement. This is where the person acts as if they were in the same group as the audience of like-minded thinkers. For example, we all know that, surely we all share the view that, everybody knows that, everybody believes, it is well established that. This can manipulate the audience to believe it would be unreasonable not to agree. Emotive language uses phrases and examples which are intended to provoke an emotional response. Subjects like children, parents, national pride, religion, crime and security are emotive. Using these unnecessarily as arguments can manipulate the audience's emotions. People tend to trust the emotional responses. Strong emotions are usually a signal to the body to act quickly rather than slow down and use reasoning. If a person were to provoke the audience's emotions, they would become less critical of the reasoning. Where subjects are emotive, it is especially important to check the underlying reasonings carefully. A person can misrepresent an opposing argument by focusing on its minor points and ignoring its chief supporting reasons. If the minor points are not sufficient enough to support the conclusions, the opposing argument will appear weak. A person may simply attribute beliefs and arguments to their opponents without any evidence. 
Another form of misrepresentation is to present an argument in such a way that it looks as if there are only two possible conclusions or options for action. This approach depends on selecting one conclusion or option which makes the person's case appear stronger than it really is. A poor form of argument consists of focusing on certain characteristics of a person, especially those irrelevant to the main argument and ignoring more relevant information about that person. And judging by what I have seen from the creationists on YouTube, I have seen three main types of arguments presented. One method is referred to as sleight of hand. This is where a slight change of wording will take place. For example, changing a topic to something different but similar. For instance, a person will ask how traffic's the result of so many cars compared to traffic lights, then changing the topic to traffic tolls. Another argument I found was called unwarranted leaps. This is where the person adds two and two and makes five. The argument races ahead, leaving gaps in the reasoning and relying on unsubstantiated assumptions. The most common argument I recognized was called the castle of cards. This is where the person arguing uses a set of interconnected reasons. The argument presented becomes precariously balanced and depends on the previous reasons to be accepted. If one reason or assumption is proved to be incorrect, the argument collapses easily. For example, arguments presented by Venom Fang X, where he fails to justify how his specific god is responsible for intelligent design. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe, comment, rate, and favorite.